Hello everyone, how's it going today? My name is Muhammad Ali, President and CEO of Core Gems, and I have this absolutely magnificent collection of beautiful opals from all around the world. We have some stones from Australia, we have some stones from uh, Wello in uh, Ethiopia, we have some stones from Wegel Tenno in, in Ethiopia, and we have a stone from um, sorry, Peru, I believe. Anyway, we're going to look at these stones, and we are going to examine some of the key characteristics of what makes opal real and what tells you right away that an opal is a fake. So we're going to be looking at three different methods in this video. And um, first, I just want to talk about why we care. Opal is beautiful. Opal is very, very valuable, especially stones with a lot of color play and a lot of fire. The biggest uh, determinant of an opal, opal's value is not the size. It's not the uh, clarity because a lot of opal can be uh, transparent or opaque and that's totally fine as it is with other gemstones. It is almost entirely the play of color. I mean, look at how bright this stone is. This stone, despite being much smaller than some of the other stones, is the most valuable if it's real. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. So we're going to take some closer look at all these stones and then I want you guys to guess before we even start. We'll, we'll, we'll go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, so on. And I want you guys to go ahead and give it your best shot. And just from visual inspection alone, take a guess as to which opals are real and which ones are fake. And then I will tell you some testing methods that will help you along the way. And then hopefully you will be able to test at home. I will tell you one method that is guaranteed to work and two that can help you narrow down your choices. So we'll take a look at A. It's my favorite by far. We'll take a look at B. Nice stone as well. This is the back side, this is the front. We'll take a look at C, which is set in a nice little ring here. Okay. We'll take a look at D. Oops. There we go. Very pretty little stone. We'll take a look at E. I already saw this one, but it's still very nice. We will take a look at F. We will take a look at G. Wow, that's a pretty one. We'll take a look at H. And finally, we'll take a look at I. Ooh, very nice confetti like color play on that stone. Okay, so now that we've looked at each stone, can you tell which ones are real and which ones are fake? It's not very obvious, is it? Um, a lot of the stones look very similar, a lot of stones look very different, so it's very, very hard to tell just from visual inspection alone. So the first test I want to go over is density. Now, this stone has, I mean, this method is very, very limited in that it only works with large stones unless you have very precise equipment. What this entails is taking a scale such as this one right over here and you want to weigh the opal. You want to weigh the opal in grams or in carats and then convert it to grams. We will weigh this opal here. It gives us a weight of 3.62 carats, which is approximately, approximately 0.6 grams. So we can write that down. Um, where did my marker go? Let's use this here. So approximately 0 0.6 grams. We'll use a different sheet of paper for this. Okay. So we have a weight of approximately 0 0.6 grams. Now you'll see here it all says volume measure and water. How we use this is we place the opal into a volume measure such as a graduated cylinder or a measuring cup. It needs to be uh, precise to the milliliter. Make sure when you're inspecting it, you do it at the meniscus level. So you'll notice how the water dips a little bit. You want to do it at that lowest point. And that is the point you want to use. So let's say this displaced, give me a second here. Better by 0 0.6 grams. We we want the opal to be in the range 
So once you figure out whatever amount here for your volume, sorry, this should be on the top, 0 0.6 grams, divided by whatever amount you figure out for your volume, centimeters cubed, that will give you your density for your opal. If that density falls into this range over here, 1.90 grams per centimeter cubed, and 2.30 grams per centimeter cubed, then there is a chance, not a guarantee, but there is a chance that you may be looking at authentic opal. So again, you want to get the, so you, you figure out the baseline level of water. Let's say it's 100 milliliters. And when you place the opal inside, let's say the level rises from 100 milliliters to 101 milliliters. So you would get 0 0.6 grams divided by one milliliter, which would give you a density of 0 0.6 grams per centimeter cubed. And you would know that there is no way that this can be opal because the density needs to be between 1.9 grams per centimeter cubed and 2.3 grams per centimeter cubed. <clears throat> so, and also, just keep in mind, one milliliter of water is equal to one centimeter cubed. That is why we're able to use the water as an accurate measure for volume. Okay, now moving on to step number two. You will need some sort of measurement uh, magnification equipment. I have this here. I also have a jeweler's loop. Uh, you can get these very affordably on eBay. They're not expensive and they're very accurate. Or you can honestly just use your phone, um, zoom in on the stone, and if you have some comparables, so just search magnified opal on the internet, excuse me, and you'll be able to see some telltale signs of natural and synthetic opal. Taking a zoomed in look at some of these stones, right away we can see that pretty much all of them are indeed authentic, except this stone here. And one of the key giveaways upon magnification that you will notice is that all the patterns on this synthetic opal are consistent. And you can see the baseline of the color play even when there's no light hitting that area. So you see those patches of uh, shaded blue and shaded green that result in the color play? That's because there's suspended material inside this that causes the color play. Whereas, actual opal is caused by silica discs. So when there's no color play, when there's no light hitting that area in a, in a method that causes color play, you see absolutely nothing. See how it's just completely blank material until the actual color play comes out. That's, that's the first method of visual inspection. Second method is if it's set in jewelry, you can take a look at the actual ring itself. As you can see, this is not stamped anywhere meaning it is not precious metal. Authentic opal, if it's medium or low quality, will be set in silver. High quality will be set in gold or platinum with diamonds. This is set with synthetic stones and it's plain steel or base metal of some sort. Not a very valuable ring, which means most likely not a very valuable stone. These are two great methods to get you started. Just want to show off my tourmaline. These are two great methods of getting you started, but there's only one guaranteed method. Send it to a reputable laboratory. The only thing you need for this one are the laboratory and shipping fees and handling fees and import charges and all that fun stuff. The best lab in the world, in my opinion, and the most recognized is GIA, Gemological Institute of America. In my opinion, the actual best in terms of uh, results and in terms of um, the amount of research they do. American Gemological Laboratories, both are in New York, both are equally as great. Excellent, excellent labs. Other great labs include SSEF, um, GRS, Goblin, um, CGL GRS in Vancouver is not bad either. Um, some other good labs. Lotus in Thailand. There's lots of great labs out there. 
um, you know, depending on how expensive the stone is, you don't really need to go that expensive. Um, the higher end the, the opal, if your opal is over $10,000, don't go with anything other than those top labs that I mentioned. If the opal is about $1,000 or under, you're totally okay to go with a smaller lab such as the Gemological International Laboratories, which are headquartered in Canada and have offices in Thailand. And look at this stone. This stone is already at 350 bucks. It's on a no reserve auction. Just spectacular, spectacular stone. Take a look at my other video where I go through in detail about this stone. But as you can tell, a laboratory report will tell you exactly uh, all the characteristics of the stone, the exact weight. You'll get accurate measurements for the dimensions. You'll get pretty much all the accurate information you could ever want or need. All right. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I am absolutely exhausted after making this video because you have to talk for a long time. But that's okay because I want to inform my customers about what they're getting into. Uh, we only, only, only deal in 100% natural untreated solid opal we do not deal in doublets we do not deal in triplets uh we will discuss doublets and triplets in a later video but just keep in mind that synthetic or man-made opal is not a very valuable stone it doesn't hold its value and it's not something that i would recommend because um natural opal even fairly fine qualities can be fairly affordable compared to most gemstones um, obviously, you know, if you want something absolute gem quality from Lightning Ridge Australia, such as this incredible piece, it will cost thousands of dollars. If you want a nice stone, it's not crazy, crazy expensive. Look at that. That's beautiful. And it would only be a few hundred dollars. Anyway, hope you guys learned something. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, best of luck to all of you in your future opal buying endeavors.